So my, my niece comes home and her mother, my sister, tells her, um, you just got back from, from school, so what did you learn today? And my niece immediately replies, hey, look, I just got back from school. Let me open my computer and start to learn. Well, that's somehow how many people feel today. Learning becomes different. Here you see some ice in a liquid, and you know that ice can become a liquid. It's just the property of the water, and this is something that we learned, the property of water becoming ice. It looks quite simple. We have water, we have vapor, we have ice, we also have air, and all these natural elements are touching us, are inspiring us, and are also somehow creating some stress because of the clima climate change. So these properties look a bit difficult to understand sometimes, but they might be interesting, at least for me. I paid a lot of attention to these properties. So in the 90s, I went to Africa to share the access to the global village of the internet, and we brought computers, but I thought it was very important to bring also some philosophy, some vision that would last longer than a computer device, than a, a hardware. So the idea was to bring the governance of the internet, and I wanted to know. So I went to schools, to computer experts, to visionaires, and I asked, how does internet work? And what are the trends that will not change? What are the things that will not vary? And I've discovered many books, many experts, but each of them was bringing me something else. There was always a trend, but it was not exactly clear. So with some friends, we decided to try to understand which were these properties of the digital environment, like we have properties of water and air. And surprisingly, I discovered that not only we have these properties, but nobody learns them at school. So you have to go back after school and learn them at home with your personal choice. First property is instantaneity. Yesterday we were receiving post mail, it took days. Today the email arrives directly in our mailbox. It's a dictatorship somehow of immediacy, but at the same time, it creates some facilities. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm saying that these properties are not changeable. If you use any digital tool, it will be like this. The same for decentralization. Internet is robust because it has no center that you can break. It's the principle of a distributed information system. And this helped the militaries and then academies to make sure they would not lose the connection. Multilaterality is also something changing totally the way we share information. Everybody can become a television or a radio. Yesterday, there was the broadcast decided by some centralized systems. But today, we can really make the difference by becoming a channel. Persistency is a fourth property that is creating quite a big mess in our system because it's the end of privacy somehow, which is somehow good for governmental issues which are more transparent. But meanwhile, for private life, well, we have to deal with it and to learn how to manage the information we are sharing. And asynchronicity is this thing, you know, the answer machine, you left a message on 
the answer machine of somebody and he could hear it later on. Well, we can do this with everything. We can watch a TV program later. We can decide when we want to receive and send any message. And this changes again totally the paradigm. So these properties now, I was happy to tell to the friends I was sharing these computers that these properties were in action in our everyday life and that they could understand better what was going to happen in the next decades with the digital environment because this would not change. And this is the interesting thing because we learn, we understand, we feel that internet is changing but we also think that in 10 years we don't know what's going to happen. Well, these properties will not change so somehow we can know what's going to happen. Net neutrality is a good example. Internet is the result of lots of, conf of competitive pro proposal of how to interconnect systems. And if the internet became the success that we know today, it's not because the army allowed the protocol of internet to be spread all over. It's because it was so neutral that it was offering a fair ground and that this neutrality was the base, was the reflection of these properties, and it was excellent, it was perfect, it was totally corresponding to the reality. It's the same if you want to have some ice in your glass, you need to put it in the freezer. It was obvious, but some people didn't know, so they, su they didn't succeed how to do the, the, the ice, and with the internet, I could see that, finally, it was just the result, the product of this um, large testing, prototyping, and many other proposals of interconnected network didn't work because they did not respect the properties. So the same for the independence of the cyberspace. In 1996, this guy with a, a long beard called John Perry Barlow, he presented at the World Economic Forum of Davos uh, the Declaration of Independence of the Cyberspace. And it's strange because he was at the same time multimillionaire of the net economy, he was at the same time a farmer and a punk. He was writing the lyrics of the punk group The Grateful Dead. So this very creative guy who didn't care about his look, he said, in the plenary of Davos Forum that governments and big companies of the industrial world were not able to understand what was going to happen and what was happening in the cyberspace because it was ru ruled differently. The governance was different. Actually, he did not speak about these properties. This is why this is my idea worth spreading, is that these properties are the key. But he explained that this was was making a difference, and it was quite exciting. And there is another guy with a long beard called Richard Stallman, and in my quest to understand the governance of the internet, I had the chance to receive him in my house, and I didn't like his attitude, he was a very special guy, but his ideas, everybody agrees somehow that they are the best ideas. He created the GNU project. This project is the base of somehow the best action, the best way to apply the socio-technical properties of digital environments. And these rules, these, these vision are called the four fundamental freedom. It's the GNU project, and we also call it copyleft culture, and it's the base of free software Accessing, using, modifying, and redistributing information is a societal choice. And for any functional system, any code of conduct, a software is a code of conduct, it is a prerequisite to be fair. And that it works. It's a prerequisite that it, for working sustainably. So, for example, GNU and Linux are the most famous success, the most visible acting properties of the digital environments. And remix culture that was 
inspired by free software and that inspired Larry Lessig created the Creative Commons. We know the licensed Creative Commons are being used uh, in TED Talks and it's, it's not by chance. It's, they made a choice. They saw that it was coherent with the current trend of information society where sharing is more important. And of course, the miracle of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not only uh, encyclopedia and a website. It's also a community of people whose governance rules are very different and can inspire. They use Condorcet methodology to vote. So for one position, you can choose many people if you have two seats, 10 candidates, each people can vote for five or seven candidates and say, these three candidates, I don't feel comfortable with them, but the seven others, for me, for these two seats, it's okay. So it creates a totally different way to choose to elect. And it's not only about election. The design of Wikipedia and of wikis, of the collaborative online tools, with history, with tracking, with bots, with moderation, with revoking all these new ways of functioning are creating a new way of governing information society. It's very inspiring. So in this quest, I was just wanting to explain how this computer work, but it took me years to understand that it was not that easy. I had to reprogram myself a lot. And I brought a lot of people like Richard Stallman and Florence Devoir, the first woman chairing the Wikimedia Foundation who's operating Wikipedia. I brought them to, together in conferences, in research programs to make sure that we could really promote a new vision that I call netizenship. Citizen of the internet, new civic approach. And the race of netizenship awareness is today clearly happening in my perception. And it's so exciting to see that shift happens and that people feel they are the key to change. But now this paradigm shift can be framed, can be understood, can be adopted and spread largely because we can reprogram our brain, it takes years, but we can understand that intellectual property, cyber law, music, everything can be seen differently. And that's the exciting aspect. By understanding better how all these things work, we can develop a new general culture that I call e-culture, like a set of solutions to feel more comfortable in digital environments that are surrounding us like water and air. The first very simple civic behavior on the internet is called the netiquette. It's not about ethics, it's about protocol. There is a priest who made a prayer and he said, May our tongue be gentle, our email be simple, and our website be accessible. And he, he blessed the smartphones. It really happens in a church. Actually, it shows that the codes of conduct are an important matter, even for spiritual reasons. But the interest is that knowing how to click or knowing how to be gentle and simple and accessible are basic rules which are not satisfying enough the challenge of climate change, of sustainability today. So, understanding free licenses with the four fundamental freedom, after all these years, trying to understand the deep roots of information society, I can, I can really explain how it works and I really feel it's very important to say and to use the free 
culture licensing. Many people use the word open. Open is great, but it's about quality. Here it's about a societal choice. It's already good, but using the free word and applying the free culture means also redistributing and allowing anybody to have equity of chance. It changes a lot. It's the real sustainable approach. Recognizing peers when we choose a colleague, a friend, by not only browsing and seeing his photo, but the quality of his contribution. It creates what we call in the digital culture a bizarre approach, not a cathedral hierarchy of status, but a hierarchy of contribution where we still have some leaders benevolent for projects, but many leaders for many projects, and sometimes you're the leader, sometimes not. So we are all peers. And TED culture for this is, for, for me, wonderful. Editing in wikis. This is a new netizen behavior. The edit button creates a totally different approach to sharing of information, because for mostly for functional information, for how-tos, for everything that we need together, methodologies, codes of conduct, it's better to share our know-how by editing, and this creates a totally different relationship. For example, in collaborative note-taking, when we make a report, it's not just one person taking the report of a meeting, but all the people can report together on the same document at the same time during the session. It changes the relationship of the people, and that's the paradigm shift. Tracking trolls. Internet trolls are the emotional risks of wrong debates that can create flame wars and problems in the good collaboration of people in, a, in, in an environment, in a forum, anything. So tracking them and saying, hey, look, this is unfair, what's going on here? And avoiding fear, uncertainty and doubt, what we call FUD. These are new netizen behavior, which go a bit further than just having a gentle email, but it's the same direction, of course. One of them I really like is controlling my virtual identity, knowing what I will share about the others. So, for example, not allowing data to be sold because I become the product. On some social network, it works like this, and it's better that I can control my own virtual identity and be judged by the quality of what I presented and not by what people defined of me. Actually, it helps people, at least me, to feel more comfortable and I don't care about having a long beard. So let's make a little demo about it. Well, as you can see, it's the same me. It's just that I'm controlling my, my identity and I feel comfortable to explain the same thing with the type of suits I'm good in. So I can say hello to my African friends. And adopt Wikinomics, the collaborative culture where result-oriented approach is more important than the type of wear you're wearing. This is the same in competition. All these notions that many great TED Talks are presenting the web as random act of kindness, um, wiki leaks, all these great ideas are inspired by the properties of digital environment. I made a coming out about creating ecological cities to propose from scratch a new governance. I think it's important that we propose 
for climate, climate change a new way of collaborating, but it's not that easy if we don't understand netizenship. This is why I was born in Switzerland, but today I migrated first to Sweet Surf land, and I wish that it becomes a land for crowdsourced collective ownership. Thank you. <laughs>